everybody, it's Tammy Trier, Trier Wilderness. Today's video has a special title and something that's near and dear to my heart. And I also feel uh, very grateful to be a part of a special collaboration. Today's video is Kids, Simple Living, and Special Challenges. We were invited uh, by Teal House Farm to collaborate with several other homesteaders and YouTubers to share our experience uh, with special needs children and our lifestyle. So we will be collaborating with uh, Farm Alarm, uh, Daybird Avery's, as well as uh, Daddy Curbs Farm and Teal House Farm. So the links for each of those channels is down below in the description and I encourage you to go visit their channel as well because they are putting out a video of their own titled the same um, on the same topic to share our stories, um, our experiences and to hopefully help others um, wanting to embrace homesteading, wanting to give their special needs children a, opportunities that they may not otherwise have. So let me share a little bit about Trier Wilderness and myself and my family. We embarked on our off-grid homesteading journey in 2010. It is myself, my husband Glenn, the mountain man, and our son Austin, the mountain boy, who has been the mountain boy for years, but he's now going to be getting coined the mountain man junior. He will be 22 in a week or so. So we embarked on this journey in 2010. We purchased a property in northern Idaho, sight unseen, while we were living in Pennsylvania. And we traveled 2,500 miles to completely overgrown wilderness land, and to us it was a playground. We set up a canvas wall tent, and we lived in that for eight and a half months and called that home while we groomed our land and built our homestead. And uh, our son is high-functioning autistic with Asperger tendencies. and. I am always grateful for the opportunity to share our story because he has overcome so, so much in his life and I am just so proud of the man that he has become and what his dreams and desires are in his life as well. And every child on the spectrum is different. There are two sides to the spectrum and Austin was high functioning and uh, he still had a lot of struggles and what we want to offer is encouragement to all of you on the spectrum that there is hope for improvement, there is hope for uh, a greater life than what they may have and there is hope for an awesome future for our children. We just need to seek it and, and be willing to accept help from others. So. Through this collaboration, the Mountain Man Jr. and I um, took some time and we did some different video footage um, to share some of his story, some of um, his thoughts, uh, so that you're not just getting my side of the story. So we will delve into that in a little bit, but I wanted to share some of the things that he has overcome. As I stated, the Mountain Boy is going to be 22, or Mountain Man Jr. is going to be 22 and uh, he was diagnosed at age seven and it was a long journey. When he was young there were not a lot of resources for autism and Asperger's. It was still rather unknown. Um, there weren't a lot of uh, options and um, we had to pretty much fight for everything we got but we fought in a kind way. We fought in a compassionate way um, and in a heartfelt way for what we we needed and um, God blessed us greatly with so many angels on our path and that's why we both feel very um, feel it's very important for us to share our story um, to help others because we were so blessed on our journey preschool was when we noticed um, that well when other people noticed that he was struggling with his uh, social and motor skills um, I noticed directly after an immunization that he was having different struggles and was different. Uh, but it wasn't until he went to preschool that we really had a comparative, something, something that we could compare to because he was home with his sister and you know he was busy playing and he was nonverbal. But the doctor, pediatrician, felt that, you know, he was just slower and it wasn't really a big deal. But he didn't crawl till much later. He didn't walk till he was 18 months. 
So these delays all triggered things for me. You know, I had that gut feeling. Uh, as a matter of fact, when he was diagnosed, the pediatrician stopped talking to me. Um, he was a good doctor, but there were there are people that are often in the medical system in denial and and not willing to either see that they missed something or give someone a title. We never wanted Austin to have a title, but I didn't know what was wrong. And as a mother, I needed to know what was going on so that I could best help him without having a clue there. I didn't know how to help him. So we continued on our journey and through preschool we were able to get um, some additional help. He was evaluated and they said, don't call us, we'll call you. Well, we never heard anything from them, so of course I called. And his file was lost, misplaced, and finally located, and we missed those services. Then he went to kindergarten and really greatly struggled. It was very overwhelming. He didn't speak well. Um, he, he had problems processing things, and we later found that he had an auditory processing disorder. And it was just a real struggle for him. He'd come home and just have outbursts every day. And... Um, I wanted to hold him back and they suggested that I pushed him forward because we'd have a better chance to evaluate him and find the gaps in his learning and they were so right and I was so blessed to have such wonderful principals and teachers in his path and they put him in a special needs classroom so that he was getting one-on-one -on -one attention uh, more so than in a regular classroom and uh, we did find his gaps and it did help to get him in that special needs environment and in that smaller room setting it wasn't near as overwhelming but he still had such great struggles and outbursts and temper tantrums and just a lot of screaming um, very stressful and uh, it wasn't till I met the next angel and that was in the grocery store a dear friend of mine who mentioned that she started working for a doctor in town who was doing hyperbaric oxygen therapy and that he had been working with um, special needs and autistic children for 25 years so what a blessing we still didn't have him diagnosed but we were getting closer to learning what was going on with Austin and we met with this doctor and we started hyperbaric oxygen therapy at this point Austin was in third grade and he was at a pre primer reading level in third grade, struggling greatly. And uh, we started the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It was a canvas barrel, more or less, that we would climb, step into, and they would zipper it up, and we could lay in it, or we could sit hunched over a little bit and play games. We'd lay and watch movies. I had to go in with him in case he'd have struggles. They couldn't decompressurize it right away, so that way he wouldn't go into panic mode. So. We did two um, visits a week, an hour long each, and did that for seven and a half months, and he went from a pre primer reading level to a high second grade reading level. In addition to that, this doctor reviewed him and felt that he was probably on the spectrum and suggested some supplements as well as a change in diet. The change in diet was extremely huge for Austin. He went on a gluten-free and a dairy-free diet. And I will be very honest, when we were told that, I was excited, but when I went and started reading all the packaging on all the products that we normally ate, it was extremely overwhelming because dairy and wheat are fillers in everything. And at the time, there was not a lot of gluten-free food that was pre-packaged, and what was did not taste very good, and it was like cardboard. So it caused me to immediately have to learn how to cook with gluten-free products and learn how to utilize other things other than dairy to get the same results. So it was quite something and quite a challenge in the beginning, but um, I'm sure that you as a parent of a special needs child would agree that we will jump hoops and climb very tall mountains to make things happen for our children. So as a result of that, um, in 2014 or 13, I don't remember when I published my cookbook, but I spent a lot of time and effort in creating everything that uh, Austin enjoyed eating in a gluten-free fashion. And once we were here, I spent a whole summer perfecting the gluten-free food so that the mountain man could not tell the difference, which was a huge feat. The only thing that I could not perfect was making bread that had the same consistency. 
So if you are in need of the gluten-free and dairy-free diet or would like to try it, my cookbook is all of our favorite recipes with conversions to gluten-free and dairy-free and lots of gluten-free tips. And you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Tammy Treyer. One of the main things that the gluten-free and dairy-free diet gave to me was the ability to meet my son for the first time and actually hold conversations with him. He went from speaking in blotchy sentences to full sentences and um, it was really uh, very uh, emotional for me um, to be able to have that with him. I was one of the few that could actually understand what he was trying to get across and uh, he also went to speaking in full sentences so it was a tremendous time. Now. What the dairy-free and the gluten-free diet did as well is it removed all those tantrums. Dairy is like giving our children on the spectrum, a lot of times, LSD. Uh, it doesn't affect all of them, but it, I would bet a lot of money that many of your children have gut issues as a result of the gluten and the dairy. Um, but Austin's anger and crazy outbursts, all of which he was very remorseful over, uh, he just couldn't control them, um, pretty much went away. His roller coaster ride of emotions had leveled out and um, the dairy was the culprit. The gluten uh, played a role in his gut health as well, poor gut health, but the dairy was the big culprit. And something that you need to realize also is if you are having have a child that is having problems, having um, bowel movement accidents and troubles with their bowels. One of the biggest struggles for Austin was that his bowels would shut down and he would no longer get the sensation that he needed to make a bowel movement once he had dairy. And dairy would stay in his system three to four days, typically four. And along with that came the outbursts, the anger, the crazy mood swings and and then a lot of accidents and um, it is extremely important if you do this diet that you do it a hundred percent and that you get everybody on board and you help educate them and help them to understand the importance of the of him uh, your child being on it a hundred percent I will share why Austin's biological father and family um, did not agree with the diet, didn't see the need for the diet, and did not get on board. So from the time he was seven until he was about 15, Austin struggled um, greatly because he would be 100% at our home and for a three-day visit would be given everything that he couldn't have. And there was nothing I could do um, to change anything. I didn't have a foot to stand on because there was no medical proof that it was necessary. So until Austin became his own advocate and really strongly was able to put his foot down, things hadn't changed. So when Austin had a colonic at the age of 13 or 14, the doctor said that his bowels were that of an 80-year-old's. The muscles of his bowels were that of an 80-year-old's. So it does make a difference and it is so important because you got to imagine when you're having an off day and or, or you're very stressed and you're kind of feeling like you're on that emotional roller coaster ride, imagine how our children feel on a daily basis. They already um, receive things so very different than you and I. So it's so important if you start the diet that you don't cheat, that you don't feel sorry for them because you're not helping them, you're hurting them. Basically for Austin, it was like giving him poison. So I just want to put that out there and, and you can try it and the best way to try it is to not gradually do it, just go cold turkey and just start doing all gluten-free and all dairy-free. There are so many wonderful alternatives today that weren't available when Austin was little. You've got yogurt made out of coconut milk, hemp milk, cashew milk, almond milk. There's goat's milk. We had goats for a while and the reason for the goats was so that we had their milk because their milk fat is very different than that of cow's milk and um, we knew what our goats were eating. They were non-GMO fed and no hormones, no antibiotics. So 
it was wholesome, a wholesome product, and he was able to digest that well. So there are lots of options, and there are people all over the country that are selling goat's milk on their farms or that have goat, uh, milk goats that you can purchase and raise. So that is a huge alternative. But there are so many good foods out there, and I want to encourage you to look for non-GMO foods for your children. And I know that a lot of... Um, special needs children struggle with diet. They struggle um, with only being able to eat certain foods or liking certain foods. And I want to encourage you to try to give them a wholesome f diet. It's really important for them to get their vitamins and their min minerals from their greens and their vegetables. And um, one of the things you can do if you have a, a troublesome eater because I know texture can be an issue. Austin had struggles at times with broccoli and different things if he ate it too fast, but it was one of his favorite foods. You can grind that stuff up and put it in with burgers and, and with other foods they like. If they like macaroni and cheese, grind vegetables up and put it in with it. They, you know, they won't know the difference and, and it'll get them what the nutrients that they need. So just some tips for you guys, but I encourage you, very strongly to try the gluten-free and the dairy-free diet because it was like night and day. And if you are able to do hyperbaric oxygen, um, there are people that rent them. The doctor that we went to was previously renting them and I need to inquire about that. And if he is, I will include it in the link below. There's a link for a handout and in that handout you will find all of the things I mentioned today and more. So. I will check on that, but what you can do is it's very costly and I was very fortunate to be able to barter and I was able to pay for some of it, but as a single mom, it was it was hard to do. So I was able to barter with my web design uh, services at the time. So something you can do is if there's a bunch of you with special needs children in your area, maybe you can find a local church that has a room that they will let you use and you can get the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. and each of you take turns utilizing it and go together to pay for it. It is an amazing, amazing thing for our children. Something else that you can do is just help your children to practice deep breathing. Deep breathing by itself is very calming and um, really helps the body to heal and gets your organs working, which is really important. And something else that we always did is when the mountain boy had a rough day. We started homeschooling, so when he would have a rough time with things, instead of just pushing the issue, what we would do is just get up and, and go work out, go for a walk, go for a jog, go for a hike in the woods. So there are many options and many different things. Trampolines, small mini trampolines are a really good op option as well, jumping rope. But just getting them going to get their endorphins and their adrenaline going is very calming and helpful as well. I'm also going to talk to you about some of the supplements and uh, different natural remedies that we have found that worked incredibly well for us, and I'll share that in just a moment. Now, when you get to meet Austin, you will see that he is very different than what I'm describing to you now and what I'm discussing with you now. I want to just explain to you that I um, totally understand where many of you are with your special needs children. Um, it is a challenge and every day is different. Every child is different. And I just want you to remember always that God blessed you as the parent, that you were chosen to raise this child. And there's purpose in it. And that's because you're a warrior, you're strong, and, and God knew that you would be the perfect person to, to raise your child. So on those hard, hard days, remember that. And remember to take time for yourself. A lot of the um, natural supplements that I suggest for my son, I've also used. Chamomile tea and lavender tea is really calming and relaxing. And it's, it's necessary for us to take those breaks and de-stress ourselves too, because in order to raise our children, we need to be the best that we can be. And I just want to want you to know that I am saying lots of prayers for all of you that are visiting and watching this because I know firsthand what it's like. And um, I just, uh, you are loved, you are awesome, you are a warrior, and you've got this. So just know you are being prayed for. I want to explain to you 
what things were like when Austin was young. Um, he would be throwing temper tantrums in my kitchen, screaming, um, throwing things, uh, very often come home from school doing the same thing. And um, I found some great techniques that worked really well. And one of the things I used to do was just get behind him and go around him with my arms, go around him with my legs, and just sit him down. And I'd sit with him and we'd sit Indian style on the floor and just hold him tight for a while. Get him calm, and then like I said, get him out and go do something with them. Go for a walk. Um, let them de-stress. Don't keep pushing them and expect results, uh, positive results. When you take time away and go for a walk, I have to say that the walks and the different things that I've done with my son are what has created the bond that he and I have. We can talk about anything, and that includes embarrassing things, um, but he feels that comfortable with me that he will come and talk to me about anything. And that's huge because as our children age and as they get older, they're going to be subjected to different things. And it's important to have that open communication. And it's also important to teach them um, about what they may run into and what they may experience and what it may be like and what to avoid and why. It's no different than any other child. And I just treasure the relationship I have with him. And I do uh, believe that that is a result of us taking those breaks and taking that time and going and walking and talking and diverting his attention to something else. We did a lot of fishing and hunting and uh, hiking in the woods looking for antlers and sheds from the animals around us and we did this both before we homesteaded and and now as we homestead. We live in a big adult playground here. We are surrounded by wilderness and tall timbers and it is a great place to escape and just uh, find peace and comfort and relaxation and and yourself. And also for him, it helped him to get out of his autism shell at his pace too, which was very important. Something else that was really tough for him was while he was in school, which I believe he'll talk about a little later, uh, but being in that environment was very overstimulating. He did not handle change well at all. If there was a, a assembly that he didn't know about prior to, it would just cause him to go into a complete panic attack and just an outburst. And uh, I was very blessed with every teacher and principal that he had growing up because we were on the same page. They knew I supported them. They knew how I held him accountable, regardless if it was a milk-induced tantrum or it was just a tantrum. He was held accountable. And that was really important because he knew that he needed to keep himself together as best he could. And we knew that as a result of him having dairy every other weekend, that things would happen and thankfully they were prepared and they worked with me and they had a calendar just like I did and they were prepared when he'd come in Monday morning on a dairy induced high and um, my hat is off to them their job was not easy uh, he would one one incident um, he was on the second floor of the school building that was where his classroom was he was up here at this end and his principal was over here at this end downstairs and she could hear him he was kicking and screaming he threw his desk across the room and then he sat in the corner and cried because he didn't mean to do any of it and thankfully you know like I said we were blessed with angels that were aware of the, of the kind of person he really was when he wasn't on dairy so I have experienced a lot of the same things you may be going through and I just want to let you know there is hope. There is hope on the other side of what you're experiencing and it's going to be through perseverance and strength and patience to get to the other side and to be willing to follow your gut instincts. Follow your gut instincts no matter what. If I would have listened to people that told me I was wrong and didn't follow my gut instinct, my son wouldn't be where he is today. You are the mother or the father parents who might be watching together and I hope because that's a strong strong thing when your child has both parents supporting him through this journey and that you're supporting each other because it's not an easy walk but it's one that's very rewarding and very amazing and it's just so important 
that you continue to follow your gut instincts. You know this child better than anybody else and don't let them tell you different because they're going to try. At least they used to. And I just want you to know that you know them better than anything else and that you have that gut instinct for a reason. And the sky is the limit, not just for your children, but for you as well. So God, God will send you angels. Keep an open mind and, and um, an open heart because if you are as blessed as we were, you will have angels crossing your path that have information to share with you. So stay strong. We did the hyperbaric oxygen therapy and we did the gluten-free and dairy-free diet. Austin was in third grade. And at that point, I pushed to get a diagnosis. And the principal was pretty adamant about me not getting a diagnosis because it would travel with him for the rest of his life. But like I said, without a diagnosis, I had no idea how to further help him completely. So I pushed for the diagnosis and he was diagnosed with PT. PDD-NOS, which is the autism spectrum, at that time they had that terminology. I know they use different now. So he was high functioning autistic and they also stated that he had Asperger tendencies. We also found out at the same time that he had an auditory processing disorder. So it explained a lot why people thought he had a hearing issue. It wasn't that he had a hearing issue, it's that we had to call his name, allow him time to acknowledge that, turn, and then start talking to him, and he would understand. So if you have a child that you feel like they have selective hearing and they aren't hearing you real well, um, or it's hit or miss, you may consider checking that out because that was what our situation was. And we learned that when we would make eye contact with him and get his attention and talk slowly and give him one directive at a time, he would be more likely to accomplish that than if we started talking and gave him a whole list of things to do because what would happen is either he would remember the first one, the middle one, or the last one, but he wouldn't remember all of them. So it varied and it was really important to slow ourselves down and to be able to communicate with him better and we got so much greater results. Our kids try really hard and it's important for us to pay attention to how they act and what they're trying to tell us at times. Um, I can say this now from experience. I wished I would have seen some of those things sooner to understand them myself, but without the diagnosis and without um, having someone evaluate him clearly, I didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on entirely. So it's really important and there's a lot of great services available. It's important to have an IEP in place for the school and to work with the school very heavily to try to get your child the best um, education that you can get them. Now during that process we also put him on calcium and magnesium, a calcium metabolizer spray, an acidophilus um, or a probiotic, and also B12. Now calcium is really important because our children are often very overstimulated and the reason for that is everything enters the body uh, through the eyes and um, they were constant, it's just constant receiving everything. They think often in pictures. Um, they see things very differently, oftentimes literally, um, and they can't shut things off that we can. And it's very overwhelming for them. So the calcium um, is like an insulator for the body. It's like insulation and it kind of uh, stops all that. It, it, calms the body from all the anxiety of what's coming into the body through the eyes. So one of the struggles was is that he did not process calcium very well and his body was deficient. So by using the calcium metabolizing spray, which is a natural spray, and taking calcium, um, it helped him greatly. And then the magnesium and the zinc and the B12, as well as the probiotics, all just kind of helped him be like this instead of constantly being like this, as well as the dairy. So it was an added bonus in addition to removing the dairy from his body. Now, as many of you may know, everything starts in the gut. We can heal ourselves through the gut. And if we have poor gut health, which I'm going to say um, very blatantly that our food today is very toxic and very poisonous. There's so many additives and so much garbage um, in our food. So it's very important that you focus on feeding 
organic and non-GMO foods. It's expensive, but I, through experience, it will benefit your child so greatly. Getting their gut health back and getting good gut health, good flora in their guts is so important because they will think clearer, they will function better, and um, they will be healthier. So all of those things played a huge role in helping him to be such a different child. And I want to encourage you guys to check into those. Now remember, everything I'm sharing with you is what has worked for us. It is through my experience. I am not a medical doctor, so I do encourage you to do your own due diligence and inquire and check with your doctors and the different people that you have caring for your child. We focus very heavily on natural medicines. I've lost my faith in today's medical system and um, have been doing natural medicine since I'm 14. So it's really important that you know um, what you're doing and, and have somebody to guide you. But um, natural remedies are amazing. And as with anything, all in moderation and doing your due diligence. Now something else that worked really well for us is essential oils. And in the description, or in the handout, will be my uh, recipe. Um, off the top of my head, I'm gonna try to share it with you. It is 10 drops of uh, vetiver, which is uh, an essential oil. It is very thick. So when you go to create this combination, you're going to need to use a toothpick in the hole of the bottle to get the oil out easily. So that's tip number one. And um, vetiver is a very good oil for children on the spectrum. Uh, it smells like dirt, um, but it has amazing abilities for these children. So 10 drops of vetiver, 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of balance, 10 drops of serenity, and 10 drops of ylang ylang, along with fractionated coconut oil in a roller ball applicator is something that the mountain boy carried with him all the time. Now, if your child has problems with strong odors, I wanna give you another tip. I have an illness and um, prior to the illness, I didn't have problems with odors, but um, since 2016, I cannot handle strong odors. I get extremely sick, um, extreme head pain. So I am very thankful for this. And you just take lemongrass, a bottle of lemongrass essential oil and just smell it. Um, we also have uh, jewelry that is for sale on our website that holds the oils, that you can put the oils on a bracelet as well, um, which makes it very easy and convenient. They're for both men and women, or boys and girls. Um, but the oils can be placed on the bottoms of their feet, um, on the nape of their neck, and just smelling them is uh, something that will work for your children. But lemongrass, if smelled, will coat the sinuses and eliminates the body from receiving all of those nasty smells. So the lemongrass might be too strong for your child, but if you can get them to quickly smell that, it will eliminate the stress from all the other odors. So just something to consider. Um, and the oils were very good because they're very calming oils. They're very grounding oils. Getting our kids out in the yard in their bare feet and letting them play outside is just as miraculous for our kids. Um, as much of that as you can get, as much exercise. And um, another oil that we used when he was homeschooling is Intune. Um, it's a doTERRA product. It works very well. I'm sure that the other companies have something similar. In the handout are some comparison names to different oils that you can locate, um, maybe uh, through plant therapy or uh, Rocky Mountain Oils, now brand. Um, there's a lot of oils out there. I encourage you to always look for the best processed oils. Um, what we put in and on our body is important, and um, I know that firsthand uh, for myself, but also with what we've done with Austin. So just keep that in mind. So here is Austin, the mountain boy and now mountain man junior. Hi. <laughs> Are you ready to dive in and share some information and your heartfelt feelings with everybody? I guess. All right, here we go. Okay, so let's just talk about the benefits you feel you have gained from living a homesteading and off-grid type of lifestyle. 
How do you feel you have personally benefited from that? Mm. By um, being able to be outside more and to be able to go looking for antlers whenever I wanted to. Cool. Um, and for the fresh air, which not many people are able to get. And enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, your chores here on the homestead have, um, well, why don't you share the chores you've had here on the homestead? Because we felt that it was extremely important for you to have responsibilities. So what were they? And what are they? <laughs> taking care of the animals, taking out the trash, okay. the rubbish, um, washing my clothes now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, doing the dishes sometimes. Okay. And taking the dogs out for walks. Yeah. And I'm not sure, you did say caring for the animals too? Yeah. That was, was that your biggest highlight? Yeah. Um, explain to the people watching um, what you've experienced um, on the homestead with the animals. Um, I mean, there's lots of, what, what type of animals do we have for starters? And what Chickens, do, have we had? We have one horse. Six goats. Yeah, we started out with two. So you got to witness the birth of the goats that you cared for, which you had two sets of twins. So that was, what was that like for you? I mean, I, I watched your face. I saw the experience, but put into words what that was like for you. It was really amazing watching them slowly get up just mm -hmm. after they were born. Yeah. And then it was always fun when... I went to take them back. I <laughs> ran all the way back, mm -hmm. and all six of them followed. <laughs> it was really <laughs> funny. We we free ranged our goats on the homestead. Um, initially, when we had the babies, we would chain the mamas, and the babies would just stay with the mamas. Um, then we just started free ranging them. And what was very unique is they would stay on our property line. They didn't they didn't go out of our property line, but they would roam on our five acres, and which was great for getting rid of all the growth and excess uh, things on the homestead as far as shrubs and different things that we didn't want around. And all we'd have to do was whistle. I could whistle from the house and they'd, they'd come. They were kind of like dogs. They would follow us around. If I was going out to see who was trespassing, I'd have goats start following in behind me and end up with an entourage of six goats with me. But and he, sometimes chickens. And chickens, yes. And uh, he would go out and he would go down where the goats are and just run back to the barn and they would all just follow him and run behind him. It was the most... I have video. As a matter of fact, if I can find the video, I will put it behind this clip. But it was, it was quite a fun time. So you really thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. I have to share one of the unique things with Austin with the animals is it always amazed me. He sees such great detail in things. Um, I'll give you an example. One time he was with my mother and they went to an old bank. And as they walked through the door, just simply walking through the door, he grabbed her and pulled her back to explain to her how the old hinges and the hardware on the door worked because he saw that as he walked through the door that fast. And she was totally flabbergasted. He sees great detail, which is an amazing gift. And what was really always neat with the animals is he would see things that the mountain man and I never noticed because he saw to such a detail, and it was so cool. Um, he took great pride in watching and taking care of his animals. So, you know, that has helped you greatly. Yeah. So, and the responsibility of things. You did balk sometimes. You didn't mm -hmm. necessarily enjoy doing chores all the time. But what no. do you what do you have to say about having those chores and the responsibilities that you had now that you are twenty two? Or it soon was, to be twenty two. It was worth it to learn all that so that if I decided to do get chickens and that that I could go know what to do. Okay. And that goes to the extent of not only caring for them and loving them, but also having to butcher them. And um, you had mentioned something to me earlier when we were talking, and I should have been filming, but what is one of the big things that you feel you have gained from living this lifestyle and what you have learned? 
Do you remember what you shared with me earlier in regard to preparedness? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> well, think about it right now in regard to preparedness and the life skills that you know. The average child learns life skills in a home, in an apartment, um, and they are brushing their teeth, putting deodorant on, maybe making a meal. Um, you know, where what have you learned outside of that? that area. A little bit of rewiring in that. Okay, you've learned how to rewire. Okay, you know, you're blessed to have a dad who knows construction and mm -hmm. is very handy. So you've learned a lot from him. What are some other things you have learned? You know, your life skills and your level of preparedness is very broad. So what are some of the things you have learned? So about doing plumbing, okay. a little bit. Okay. And blacksmith work. Okay. Watched a little welding. Okay, welding. Um, what about gardening? That was definitely not as fun. That was definitely not as fun. You didn't no. like that as much. All right, that's okay. How Too about much weeding? Ah, the weeding he doesn't <laughs> like, but you like eating. Just not weeding. <laughs> uh, especially out here with all the uh, thistles. <laughs> Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah. You have to wear love <laughs> Love gloves. <laughs> leather gloves. Leather gloves. Okay. Plus another pair of leather gloves. Yeah. Just to avoid thistles. <laughs> yeah, so double thickness of love gloves. <laughs> That's gonna be our new term. The leather gloves. <laughs> okay, so you've also done canning. Yeah. And and also the prep work to canning, which we typically spend a whole day or more doing our chili sauce. And I believe that's something that's a favorite of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you've learned different aspects of preserving food. You know how to hunt very well because he skunked us all this year initially with getting a buck, whitetail buck, and a uh, spike elk this year. So... He left us all hanging and needing to fill our tags, so that was pretty awesome. Good headshot, too, on the elk right under the mm -hmm. ear. Dropped it, so very nice. <laughs> While it was running. While it was running, mind you, down a hill and very fast, so it was very impressive. I was, I was a very happy mom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you know how to hunt. You know how to butcher. You know how to do all of these life skills. Share a little bit about um, how we've pushed you out of your comfort zone. Um, one particular thing comes to mind for me, but I'll see what you share first. What, what do you think of as far as us pushing you out of your comfort zone and pushing you to achieve? Um, one thing would be I was always afraid of heights, so I didn't want to go up really high to start. And then they made me a treehouse, and then I used a had to use a ladder to get up to it. Yeah. So I learned not to be afraid as much. And what did you do last year helping your dad in construction? <laughs> helping with the roof, putting the roof on. So you very much pushed yourself out of that comfort zone. Yeah. His treehouse was stilted. So he could play underneath it if he wanted to as well. Um, Not nice. anymore, though. No, because that became the uh, <laughs> birthing barn for our goats that winter when they were pregnant. So that's now enclosed. But the only way to get in his treehouse was on a ladder. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I do Facebook Live videos every Wednesday at 10.30 Pacific Standard Time. And he was joining me last week for a little bit, and we were talking about autism. And one of the things that one of the ladies asked is, would he have pushed himself as hard if we wouldn't have pushed him? And do you remember what you answered? Pretty sure I said probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the biggest things I think happens today with children with special needs, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody by this, is that they are coddled. And um, 
one of the greatest things I found early on with him is that the more I pushed him and the more I pushed him out of his comfort zone, the more he flourished and the more he shined. And what is your perspective on life today? How do you view things? Definitely in a way different. Like, yeah. it would have been harder for me if we didn't do this. I probably wouldn't have gotten as far. And as far as challenges and things in your life, um, how do you view accomplishing them? Just grateful. Okay, okay. Um, what I was, that's pretty cool. What I was getting at was um, you view things that the sky's the limit. Yeah. And that anything you set your heart and mind to. I could do. Yeah. And that's, that's an important feeling. Um, that gives you good self, self pride and motivation and desire. Yeah. With that. Now, I asked you this earlier, um, and I, I kind of expected the answer I got, but do you feel that you've missed out on anything living this lifestyle? A little. Okay, so what are those things? Mostly friends, because we're so far back in, and there's not many people that I know around. And you were homeschooled? Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't really... Meet that many friends. Meet as many people. Now you have mm -hmm. a good many friends from church and yeah. different things. But, um, and I get that. And I, okay, so in regard to that aspect of things, with homeschooling and being part of the school system, you were part of the school system prior to us moving here. And it was set up so that when we got here, you, um, were tested and evaluated and you were supposed to enter the school system out here. I've always wanted to homeschool you but being self-employed I was always afraid that I would somehow slight your education and um, it just so happened that we had a month of rain um, we were still not in our house we were living in a canvas wall tent while we were building our home for eight and a half months so we had clay up to our knees our pants stood by themselves in the tent when we would get undressed at night because they were so full of clay and our water started freezing we didn't have showers and your bus stop was super early in the morning and we couldn't even get out of our driveway all the time yeah. so we decided to homeschool you that was our sign from God that we were now was the time so you started homeschooling and your first year homeschooling you did two school years in one because you were able to focus better and you were excited yeah okay now let's step back while you were in the school system what did what were your days like it's frustrating sometimes okay um, overwhelming yeah and overstimulating yeah now it's great to have those friends but in your opinion looking back and thinking back about it. Did you benefit more by homeschooling than, than by being in the school system? Yeah, I benefit a lot more. Okay. And as far as having friends and being more involved, there were opportunities for you to be further involved and you could have done different sports and different things, but we were building our homestead and getting that going so we were focusing on the church avenue and the group of church friends so you did get to hang out with friends just not very often not on a daily basis no. Sundays you saw people once a month you saw people mm -hmm. you get together and you'd hang out with friends plus you went to camp winter camp and summer yeah. camp and connected with people so we used that avenue um, to connect with people um, so there's a little tidbit for you if you are planning to homeschool. More inner connectivity with other kids is always good. Um, and he's right, we do live back in, so that is one way. In, in a way that I felt that he was a little slighted compared to us growing up with people near us and able to connect with us a lot easier. Um, however, 
I think overall the benefits that you received um, have been so much greater. And at the time, you struggled being in, with crowds of people and around a lot of people at, at one time. Yeah. Where now, his, his mother and his father are the ones that are the hermits and struggle with being in crowds and now he wants to be around people. So that's good. So maybe we've reversed things, I don't know. <laughs> Oils are really good at calming. Getting your, your child to breathe deeply, um, to exercise a lot. He mentioned um, one of his favorite things was to walk. He and I walk every day with our dogs. Now we've hit a time where we've got a lot of rain and we also had hunting season and it was a little sketchy taking them out on walks because... And snow. Well, and the snow. Snow, we start snowshoeing though. Well, some of us do. I don't have any, the right size snowshoes anymore. Yeah, we'll have to fix that. But we're walking buddies. And we always did a lot of PE, physical education, in our homeschooling. We would go out and explore. We would look for antlers and sheds in our wilderness. We are surrounded by endless tall timber and wilderness here. So he's had an amazing playground um, in his backyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting them out, getting them fresh air, um, getting them exercise is extremely important. It gets their endorphins going. It helps them to relax. It helps calm them. So when your child's having an episode, those are such huge, huge benefits to being able to uh, de-stress them naturally. Um, I was very against medication. I did not want to medicate him, so we found other alternatives to help him progress, and we never needed to medicate. Um, the things that he utilized helped him greatly. Did you feel relief from all of those things? Yeah. Yeah. And and these are things that we as adults can use too. Um, don't hesitate to sniff your child's autism blend when they're having a fit because it's all calming oils. It's all oils that will help calm you as well. So keep that in mind. A good cup of chamomile tea and <laughs> lavender tea, right? You said that. <laughs> chamomile. Chamomile. Really funny. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so that gives you an idea of some of the things that we have done um, here on our homestead to help aid Austin in his healing process and his growth process. Um, as he matured, there were different things that we put into place also. And um, you can find on our website at treyerwilderness.com um, a full section on autism, which we are constantly expanding on. And we may have some um, other news upcoming uh, where Austin is um, exploring and having his own adventures and his own website where he will be sharing details on um, his life with autism. He also has some really cool things upcoming. I want to touch on another question. Um, one of the things that was asked is what are the three biggest challenges uh, that we face um, relating to the diagnosis and, homes and our homesteading lifestyle? And we kind of tossed that around a little bit and... can't really think of any. Yeah, we're at a loss for any challenges that we have while we're here. Now, we moved here when Austin was 13. So we had already had our diagnosis. Um, we did move here um, because we were seeking a simpler life, a life where he could come out of his autism shell at his own pace and kind of create our own lifestyle away from society. Not that we weren't a part of society, but we wanted to give him a wholesome life um, like the life that we had growing up. And it just seemed to be disappearing more and more um, and unavailable. And so we felt we needed to create that. So um, as far as the challenges, our challenges with the autism itself were prior to. However, once we were here, um, you know, there were uh, just progressive um, aging and, and how he matured and how different things um, affect his, you know, as he was maturing, how that affected him and his growth and, and um, what that meant for autism. So as they grow and mature, you're going to need to um, just listen to your children and pay attention to your children and try to uh, accommodate their needs as they grow. Um, you'll find some stuff on our website regarding... Um, the teenage years and so forth. So, um, and, and 
we want to offer you as well that you can reach out to us at any time by emailing us at survive at treyerwilderness.com and, and either of us can field your questions and we encourage you to question and leave your comments down below. Um, don't hesitate. There is never a bad question or a foolish question without asking a question you will never know the answer. So we encourage that. Um, the only struggle that comes to mind is that Austin and I have an extremely almost scary connection because we know what each other's thinking sometimes when it comes out in an odd way like he may say half a sentence and speak out of his mind was thinking the other half and shared part of it and I'll know what he's talking about where the mountain man will look at me and be like how did you even know what he was talking about so we have this mother-son telepathy thing I don't know what it is but um, so I think that would be one of our struggles was just him understanding sometimes what you were trying to get across mm -hmm. and what you were saying. Um, but it became a fun, it was a fun thing. I mean, oftentimes at our dinner table, still, we have Austinisms where he takes something that, um, takes something literally that was meant otherwise. And the other funny thing is if something is spoken that is meant to be literal, he doesn't get it. So it's really, really funny and it just adds humor to our lives. How about it? Yeah. <laughs> now, the one thing that it does ask, um, one of the things that they were, they had some questions that we could maybe field while we were doing this event. And um, what are the three biggest benefits you find with autism and your homesteading? Does anything come to mind? <laughs> it does for me. Um, you see things so much different than us so um, a lot of times he had good insight with the animals he had good ideas with some of the projects we were working on and uh, his humor his humor alone and this young man despite his early start and his rough tantrums and just um, autism consumed body the real Austin is shining through and he's a very sensitive, very comical, um, very fun loving. It's his passion to make other people laugh. It is his passion to make sure everybody is okay. So I think that is a huge benefit to our homestead. Um, homestead living can be crazy. Uh, you're always doing lots of projects and you could have failures and different things breaking and, and in spite of of your struggles you got to have a good positive attitude because that's what keeps you moving forward so I think he's got a great attitude and a great perspective on life mm -hmm. and I think what do you think about all that you've learned interesting interesting you guess well you made a comment earlier when we were talking off camera um, about how you feel like you're further ahead because of what you know in a preparedness aspect of things mm -hmm. in addition to homesteading we have a great passion for wilderness survival so we do a lot of bushcraft and we do a lot of um, traditional things so our um, our things for fun we're often getting out in the woods and lighting fires so it's not very common that you have parents teaching their children how to light fires for starters then you incorporate special needs children into that he was learning at an early age how to hunt how to use firearms how to light fires how to build shelters and how to build snares you've gone trapping with your dad yeah so you know as you said earlier you know your preparedness mind is very broad compared to the average child mm -hmm. which is really really awesome and also you know what you can teach other people pretty cool yeah can you think of anything else no nope. nope my brain is pretty much shot <laughs> all right so I have a question for you uh -oh. <laughs> What would you say to the parents of special needs children that are out there that are watching this video? Just try the 
Extra. How do you pronounce? What are you trying to say? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not reading this one. <laughs> <laughs> The oxygen. Oh, yeah. hyperbaric, hyperbaric oxygen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to try the hyperbaric oxygen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And not to give up. Very good advice. Very good advice. Um, what would you say to the kids of the parents that are watching? What would you say to the kids that have special needs? Do not eat gluten or dairy. Products. <laughs> okay. Don't eat gluten or dairy products. How about um, when it comes to accomplishing things? Never give up. Keep trying. Okay. All right. How about as far as fitting in? I'm going to incorporate Temple Grandin into this part of our conversation. We had an amazing opportunity a week and a half ago to go meet, speak to, and listen and hear Temple Grandin speak um, at one of the Idaho colleges. And uh, Temple Grandin has been my hero since this young man was diagnosed because Temple Grandin was one of the few that was out there advocating for autism and Asperger's. And she has an amazing and inspiring story and I was just so excited that we were able to go and meet her and she says that we might be weird but we have a lot to offer the world and we are oftentimes the missing piece to collaborative projects with engineers and pencil smart people because she says that they are the um, picture and the the, um, the the image thinkers and and you have so much to add to society so with that being said you know everybody is weird everybody has their own tendencies to do different things and crazy things and and that and it doesn't really matter what other people think of you does it no nope. It matters what you can contribute yeah. and how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that this lifestyle has made you feel better about yourself? Yeah. Why? Because it makes me feel like I actually am doing something worthwhile. Very awesome. It's very important to you too. Yeah. Right now you have been working and having you've had a couple different jobs and we are in an area that it is harder to find work, yeah. correct? But you want a job, and you are ambitious, and you are looking for a job, correct? Yeah. So, since we aren't able to necessarily find an opening right now, there's no reason why we can't make an opening, is there? No. No. So, what I'm getting at is, it's important for our children to feel like they have a purpose. You want to work, and you want to work to feel like, why do you want to work? Just to feel like I have a purpose. Okay, like you're contributing. Yeah. And it was pretty neat in Temple Grandin's movie that she said that she wanted to contribute something to this world. And just because our children have special needs doesn't mean that they can't contribute and that they can't play a role in society and that they can't have um, a job. Just because they may not be able to find work in the area they are in doesn't mean that they can't create a job. There's a lot of things that our children can do and I look forward and I hope that whoever's watching this, if you're not subscribed to our channel, I hope and pray that you do. Hit the subscribe button because we have some really neat things in the works right now for the Mountain Boy, I'm sorry, Mountain Man Junior. <laughs> it's, hard, it's, it's hard to stop calling you that. Um, so we hope that you'll stay tuned because he is working on a very, very big project that we are um, seeing doors open for and waiting for others to open. And as that progresses, we will be sharing that. And it is something very big and something that I feel that... Um, the parents that are watching this right now will want to also watch for sure.
So share with everybody what it was like meeting Temple Grandin and, and uh, how she inspired you. It was amazing meeting her because of all the things she succeeded in, like building that, um, I guess you could call it a corral kind of thing. Yep. Yep. She created the, um, the construction and the design of the slaughtering chutes that are being used today. She's been doing that for 30 years. And, uh, she has a very uh, photographic mind and uh, she is also a um, professor at the Colorado University and she has done amazing things. She has penned many many books. You will find links to her books and her video in my handout. What was something else that um, really um, impressed upon you? You had shared it with me a while, right after we had seen her. Do you remember what that was? What was something that really, that she spoke about that really impressed upon you? Mm. Can't think of it right now. I'll just give you a little clue. All the other people. All the other people she mentioned that had autism. All the, the things they succeeded in. And all the big people, all the big names, all the big names that you were familiar with. Einstein, mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson, uh, I can't think of his last name, but Elon, um, no, cre cre no, no, no. he created PayPal. <laughs> I was thinking of another <laughs> He is also special needs and autistic. So our children can do amazing things and we need to encourage them and push them out of their comfort zone. Um, you know, we talked about it earlier. How did you, you know, you said that um, if we hadn't pushed you out of your comfort zone, you probably wouldn't have taken on as much as you have in life. Mm -hmm. In that regard, how do you feel about us pushing you out of your comfort zone? Grateful. Cool. He has overcome 98% of his autism tendencies and um, it wasn't easy it was with a lot of work and it was with a lot of sacrifice and I would not change any part of that and the project that he's working on right now that we hope to be sharing with you soon is another avenue that is going to require a lot of work yes a lot of work and a lot of my time and, and my help. Yeah. But the benefits are um, his future. And it's worth every bit of it to me. And again, I want to encourage all of you parents out there. You know, I know what the hard days are like. I've, I admittedly locked myself in the bathroom quite a few times because I knew he wouldn't go anywhere because he was right outside the door talking to me the entire time I was in there trying to unwind myself. You'll have those days and and they have their days but at the end of the day so much can be gained and so much can be overcome and I just want to encourage you to continue on this journey and to continue uh, listening to your gut and um, continue the homesteading lifestyle because I think it's the most amazing thing we've ever done for him and evidently he feels the same way we talked about our children having responsibilities and his chores and um, we'd have have had him involved in helping people do landscape work and odds and ends tidying around their home and and uh, helping people, you know, older, excuse me, older people um, to do some things around their home that they couldn't manage anymore. But having, having responsibility, whether it's chores, um, getting them in the workforce, teaching them how to do things, how to walk the neighbor's dogs, how to care for the neighbor's chickens while they're gone, you know, giving them responsibility early on and continuing that responsibility and increasing that responsibility and, trust, and trusting them to do things, 
something that I thought of too. When he first started doing his chickens, he had a hard time remembering everything he had to do. Share with them what we did to help you to remember everything you needed to do with the chickens. It was on a piece of paper. <laughs> no, it wasn't written on a piece of paper. Do you remember where it was written? No. On the side of the chicken coop. <laughs> yes, we wrote when we did write it on a piece of paper. And we encourage you to carry a notebook, don't we? Yeah. To write down your thoughts and what you're responsible for. But we wrote things down for him and gave him visual reminders. We used whiteboards. Something else that I thought we would share about today is um, Austin learning how to drive. Uh, Austin is a licensed Idaho driver for what the last two, three years, two or three years, um, something like that. He started when he was 16. He got his learner's permit when he was 16 and uh, so that he could get a lot of hours behind the wheel and that we could teach him on lots of different vehicles. He's actually got a motorcycle. He doesn't have his license yet for the motorcycle. He's working on learning how to ride it out here so he can go get his permit and then ride it on the road. But he's already uh, knack driving that out here, which has been really impressive to me because one of the struggles Austin has is doing a whole lot of things at one time. So being able to drive something that requires a lot of movement at one time. You've got to shift with your foot while you're holding the clutch with one hand and giving gas with the other. So he had no problems really with that and is doing really awesome. And driving, he's doing really awesome. But there were some things we had to put in place and there were some different tests that we did while driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, the benefit of living where we do is there's a lot of back roads. So Austin uh, got to drive a lot around here. He also got to put on quite a few miles in Wyoming while we were working on a construction project in Wyoming a couple years back, building a cabin for friends. And uh, he's learned a lot in his travels also. What is one thing that you struggle with on a long drive? Staying on the road again? No, not staying on the road. You do well with that. You get tired. Start swerving. Oh, okay. Now I know what you mean. Yeah, so he gets he gets really tired, and if he's driving on a straight stretch for too long, which was what Wyoming taught us, Wyoming has very straight roads, that he gets a little mesmerized. So, you know, paying attention to how he's driving um, was important so that he knew when he was getting too tired to stop and get himself something to drink somewhere or go for a walk somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and typically, um, we don't go for a lot of long drives. Um, occasionally, but um, his driving around here um, is pretty straightforward, uh, back and forth to town and um, running to different customers. He delivers firewood, um, does different things. So, um, But one of the things that we did um, that specifically stands out to me, um, two things actually. One is that when he gets in his vehicle, he needs to get everything where he wants it to be. His seat, his seat belt, the radio, the, the lights, the windshield wipers, and get everything turned on and in place so that when he's driving, he doesn't have to do any of that. That helps because um, his mind is easily distracted. So being able to focus solely on the road is what he needs to do. Um, and the more he's driven, the easier it has gotten and, and has made a big, big difference. So the more hours you can get under your child's belt, the better. The other thing that we did that stood out was testing to make sure how he would react to different things. One being inside the car, the other being outside the car. And, uh, He's been driving in snow lately and uh, has driven on a lot of wet roads, so he's experienced some things a while. Experience is what's going to help in the long run, always, with anything. But we were driving one day and we had just picked up a package and we were on a stretch of road where if something happened it wouldn't do any damage to the vehicle. But I wanted to see how he would react to something going on inside his vehicle. So I yelled really loud. I banged my hand on the box that was sitting between us, and he, out of the corner of his eye, looked over at me and said, What are you doing? 
<laughs> so he passed that test. So being able to know our children, know how they react to things, know how they, um, what their strengths and what their weaknesses are, um, you can accomplish and overcome anything. So he is a licensed driver in Idaho, and as a matter of fact, he's been chauffeuring Miss Daisy around a lot lately because I don't have a vehicle right now. We sold mine. So he has been toting me all over the place, and we've been having a really good time. So again, the sky is the limit. Um, the more we, the more time we put into our children, the benefits that come from it are enormous and anything can be accomplished. The next goal is driving a uh, stick shift um, manual transmission. He's got a 54? 51. 51. A 51 Willy Jeep that he bartered. He helped clear a friend's property and in exchange for the 51 Willie Jeep. So that is a project that he hopes to be working on and get that road worthy so that he can drive that as well. So the more we teach our children, the more we get them involved in, the more we get them interested in, uh, the more we allow them to experience the brighter and broader their horizons will become. So. If you are coddling your child some or you're not pushing them out of their comfort zone, I encourage you to greatly give it a try because the benefits are amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so, we really thank you. You thank them too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you feel that we can be of help to others, please share this video with them. And uh, never, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. We feel led, very led, to share our knowledge and be able to help others on this same journey. So don't ever hesitate to reach out to us because both of us, I speak for both of us, but you do also enjoy greatly being able to help other people, yeah. both parents and children. Mm. So... So thanks again for taking the time to watch this. We really appreciate it. And we encourage you to check out the other um, YouTube channels that are participating in this. You can find the links in the description below. And I encourage you to visit them and, and watch as many of these as you can because I know you will gain knowledge from each and every one of us. We all have different walks in life. We all have experienced different things and through that we can be such a help to one another. Uh, so please pay them a visit. So again, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this. I hope you've gained something from it and uh, we wish you so much luck on your journey and your walk. God bless. God bless.